One of the big innovative moves Aptera is making from today's automotive world is the use of in-wheel hub motors. This leaves potential buyers and reservation holders with a lot of questions. Here's what we've figured out so far. Hi, this is Echo Electric, where you'll be getting all the latest news, updates, and stories concerning Tesla, Rivian, and more. If you enjoy our content, support us by giving this video a like, and why not subscribe for more? Don't forget to hit the bell icon as well, so you'll be the first to know each time we release a new video. What are in-wheel hub motors? The wheel hub motor, also called wheel motor, wheel hub drive, hub motor, or in-wheel motor, is an electric motor that is incorporated into the hub of a wheel and drives it directly. Aptera isn't the first company that considered in-wheel hub motors. The first wheel motor concept was first conceived and patented by Wellington Adams of Street Lewis in 1884, where he built an electric motor directly in the vehicle wheel, though it was attached through complicated gearing. Although in-wheel hub motors are more commonly found on electric bicycles and motorcycles, they've recently been a lot of companies considering in-wheel hub motors for vehicles such as the Lightyear Zero, Lordstown Motors, and of course the Aptera SEV. Compared with the conventional electric vehicle design with one motor situated centrally driving two, sometimes four wheels by an axle or drive shaft, the in-wheel motor arrangement has certain advantages and disadvantages. Advantages of in-wheel hub motors Cars with electronic control of brakes and acceleration for each individual wheel provide more opportunities for computerized vehicle dynamics, such as brake steer, where individual wheel brake bias is adjusted to assist steering, similar to a tracked vehicle like a bulldozer. Active software differentials, where individual wheel speed is adjusted in response to other inputs. Active brake bias, where individual wheel brake effort is adjusted in real time to maintain vehicle stability. Weight savings. Eliminating mechanical transmission, including gearboxes, differentials, drive shafts, and axles, provides a significant weight and manufacturing cost saving, while also decreasing the environmental impact of the product. Other main advantages of in-hub motors include the fact that in-wheel hub motors have fewer moving parts, hence less room for failures, and because of that these motors are fairly reliable. Disadvantages of in-wheel hub motors Unsprung weight concerns The major disadvantage of a wheel hub motor is that the weight of the electric motor increases the unsprung weight, which adversely affects handling and ride. The wheels are more sluggish in responding to road conditions, especially fast motions over bumps, and transmit the bumps to the chassis instead of absorbing them. Most conventional electric motors include ferrous material composed of laminated electrical steel. This ferrous material contributes most of the weight of electric motors. To minimize this weight, several recent wheel motor designs have minimized the electrical steel content of the motor by using a coreless design with Litz wire coil windings to reduce eddy current losses. This significantly reduces wheel motor weight and therefore unsprung weight. Other disadvantages include the heavy weight of the hub motors, and also the fact that hub motors make it much harder to change a flat tire. Because of all these, companies like Aptera considering in-wheel hub motors for their vehicles have to carry out a lot of tests to make sure these in-wheel motors don't fail. Let's take a look at some of them. 1. Durability and Water Test one of the most important questions people are asking Aptera is how durable they'll be hanging out there in the elements instead of protected inside the car's body. Elefi, the supplier of Aptera's hub motors, has a couple of great videos showing just how much of a beating they can take. Apparently, they can handle some pretty bad conditions. While not the exact model Aptera will be using, the motors are built the same way and will be just as capable of taking on whatever we can throw at it. In one of these durability tests, Alafi trying to bend the wheel out of shape with the loads a car would throw at it doing turns, hitting bumps, etc. This would put a lot of loads on only part of the bearings and try to warp other parts out of shape, but the motor does just fine. Next, they try to break the motor by doing a shock test. Driving a vehicle, you're going to hit bumps, bump into curbs on occasion, and otherwise give a hub motor a sudden shock. The motor won't be protected by the vehicle's suspension, either. 
Off-road users would have it even harder. Alafi's motors do fine with shocks. They also do fine with vibration, which you're also going to get a lot of. Another problem you'll get more out at the wheels is water. Sprays, immersion, and other tests didn't hurt it. Other forms of water, like mud, ice, and salted mist, like you'd get on a road in winter, also failed to screw up the hub motors. They also tried salt water, both sprays and immersion, which would cause serious issues if it got inside. It took that too. Laboratories are one thing, but the real world is another. Elafi tried that too. Hitting bumps, driving on slippery spraying ice, potholes, rocks, and other things couldn't hurt the hubs. Even going fast over a bunch of speed bumps didn't hurt them either. They even pushed a running motor off the table and onto a hard floor. Keep in mind that they conducted these tests not just once or twice. They put the hub motors to the test for hundreds or thousands of hours, and then looked to see how they did. If they were going to get worn out too quickly from the things we will throw at them, Alephi would know by now. As said before, Aptera isn't the only new EV company going with Alafi's hub motors. Lordstown Motors, a truck maker, wanted to show us all how tough they were. Doing all the stuff most truck owners never do, driving in mud, going over big bumps, and otherwise getting dirty doesn't hurt them, even when carrying around a battery pack big enough to power a truck. What about unsprung weight? We talked about unsprung weight as one of the main disadvantages of in-wheel motors. Many others asked Aptera what kind of effect we can expect from the in-wheel hub motor's unsprung weight. This is what Aptera has to say. It is accounted for and largely offset by using other lightweight materials in those areas. But we haven't had enough testing compared to our previous drive shaft driven version. Our initial impressions. Having the motor weight out on the wheels makes this very light vehicle feel more grounded than the previous versions. But we will have more info on this as our testing continues. Where are the brakes? While the hub motors look like drum brakes, they do have disc brakes inside. Part of this is probably because they need to put the electric components out toward the wheel for more leverage, and that leaves a lot of room inside for the brakes. Also, given that regenerative braking will take a lot of the load, having the little used brakes put away out of the elements might help. It's going to look a little strange to people used to seeing big disc brakes behind a wheel's spokes, but with the Aptura, the whole wheel is going to be covered up. Having brakes inside the hub motor does raise other questions, like how much work will be involved if you need to change brake pads, where the brake dust will go, and how you'll inspect brakes periodically, and so we'll keep updating you of any updates Aptera or Elafi has to bring. But if I'm wheel motors are so good, how come automakers had to use them before? Hub motors aren't actually new to cars. Early electric cars from over a century ago often had hub motors and did quite well with them. With gasoline engines, hub motors aren't impossible, but it's much simpler to mount the motor in the car for several reasons. Electric hub motors aren't new at all to cars, but when gasoline engines took the industry over around a century ago, they fell out of style like any other type of electric motor. Most current EVs follow the gas approach, keeping the motor in the car. Concerns over unsprung weight have been part of the question, but it's also due to cars just being made a certain way for so long. It has been a lot easier to keep doing what automakers have been doing. I know we didn't cover every possible question you guys might have about hub motors, but it's good to know that they can take a beating and work in very difficult conditions. It's also good to know that other concerns are being considered by automakers using them in the future. Now I'm sure you know all there is to know about the in-wheel hub motors Aptera is using for their SUV and why they're doing so. But what's your opinion on in-wheel hub motors? Do you think it's an upgrade from regular motors? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, and again, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more videos like this one coming in the future. See you later.